your answer target is written, you have your T up, um, you should have some sort of transition sentence into your first subheading. Now it's time for you to fill in your subheadings. This is a part where a lot of people feel very overwhelmed. And it's not a place that you have to be overwhelmed if you think about it the way that I mentioned in a previous video. Um, rather than trying to think of your post as one gigantic 1200 word post, think of it kind of broken down into sections. Uh, think of each subheading as a mini post, you know, two to three to 400 words in each section. And what that really does is it helps you break it down so it feels less of a hurdle to overcome. And what it also does is it helps you identify the most important information that you need to include to give your reader the best experience. So it helps you and it helps the reader because you're going to include the most helpful information. Because when you only have 300 words to cover a topic, you need to choose your words carefully. And so make sure that you keep that in mind as you fill in your subheadings. Okay, cut in here. I, I, I filmed that video and I realized that I forgot a few things, so I'm just cutting it in here because it's something that you really need to know. Uh, during this process of filling in your subheadings, keep the post recipe next to you. Um, review it multiple times. Make sure that you don't get too off topic. You do want to make sure that you're answering your reader's next questions, but you don't want to go too far off topic. So whatever your post is talking about, you want to cover every aspect of the title. So if it's, for a quick example, um, best running shoes for trail running, you wanna make sure that all of your subheadings fit the topic running shoes and trail running. So you can always cover questions like what, why, who, where, when, about both of those sides of the topics. Okay, the other quick thing is that you need to edit the post as you go because you don't want to finish the post and then have to spend another 30 minutes correcting grammar, going through and fixing up the media in the post. You really want to do all of that editing as you go uh, so that by the time your two hours is up, your post is ready to publish, that's the goal. So editing is included in that two hours, which means doing it on the go is the best way. Um, as far as grammar and sentence structure, all of that, a great way to go is a free version of Grammarly. Um, Grammarly is a web browser extension that you can just put on your computer and it will catch any typos that you have, any misspellings, and then you can just fix those as you go. As far as adding media, when you get to the portion in your post where a picture would be good, a video would be good, a table would be good, add it in right there um, in that very moment that you think that it would be good. Otherwise, you might forget, you might not do it at the end of the post, especially if you're running out of time. Okay, those are all the tips that I have. Uh, you can go back to watching the other part of the video. All right, so there is a method to this, as there is a method with everything. Your first subheading should be a detailed answer to the question that's being asked in the title. So whatever your answer target was, you should take a whole subheading and expound upon your answer target. Um, give any caveats there. Make it super, super helpful in depth. Um, give any sort of um, research that you did, any sort of that original research. Maybe you have a great table um, or some sort of extra. Maybe you have some original pictures that you've taken that really fit in well there. Use that information there and make the first subheading just nail the answer in a little bit of an expanded format. Your first subheading should include some of these things. I mentioned data. So any data you have that, especially if it's data that you came up with, which is super valuable because if you have original data, then people who read your posts and want to link to you, they're going to have to give you a link to say that they took some of your information. All right, the next thing you're gonna to want to do is the reasoning. If it's kind of a, an opinion sort of um, article, then you're gonna put your reasoning. Any quotes from experts, um, you should put any nuances and anecdotes if you have any. Um, all of those things are going to make your article really, really helpful. And if you include, include some of each, then they're all going to just level up your post. All right, for your other subheadings, your next two to five subheadings, um, you are going to answer the next questions that the, that the reader is going to have. Now, you should already have your subheadings planned out at this point. They should already be in the WordPress editor. Um, and then you should have put your research underneath um, each subheading in probably a bullet point form or if you had a quote, copy and paste the quote in there. This is going to be the time where you take that information, your bullet point, and you're just going to expound upon it. Um, think as if you're giving some sort of very low-key presentation. You're kind of going to write 
um, in a sort of conversational style, not too loose, um, but in a conversational style where you can give example, you can give real life experience. Um, you can also add some data tables in there if you need to. So it's, it's not totally informal, but it's not so formal like a research paper. Don't be too uptight, you know, feel a li make the reader feel like you are their friend, someone who is a little, has a little more knowledge than they do on the topic. And that's really going to help you get more words out. Now, don't try and just fill your, your post with fluff. If you're struggling, then add a subheading. You know, if you're having a hard time coming up with what to say in your post, if you filled out your subheadings um, and you're still having a hard time, add one more subheading, add a few more bullet points, rather than just adding fluff into the subheadings you already have. That's something we see a lot with our writers. If they're struggling in the beginning, what they'll do is they'll just struggle to add words to a subheading that's really just full. They've covered it, and so they're just adding sentences here and there to make it feel full. Rather than doing that, add a subheading, add bullet points, and just pack the post with more information. You can never go wrong by doing that. Provide a good user experience. You want to have images in your post that are relevant to the topic. You can embed YouTube videos. This is a great way to put media into your post, especially if you don't have great original pictures that you've taken. Uh, because a lot of YouTube videos aren't incredibly high produced, and so they look very, they, they fit the format. Um, and they're gonna be really helpful to the reader. Another good thing that you can do is to break up the text. You probably don't want any text longer than three or four lines in the WordPress editor because when someone's reading your posts on their phone, it's just going to feel overwhelming to have five, six, seven lines. It looks like a big wall of text. Other than that, you are ready to go. Um, write the best content possible. Don't try and fill your post with fluff. Um, if you're having a hard time coming up with more, things to write about, do a little bit more research, five minutes of research, add another subheading, and you're going to end up with a super high quality post that's just better than all of the other posts out there because you've done your original research, you've included those images, those videos, those tables, those graphs, all of those things that level up your post, it's going to make your post ready to rank on Google. All right, go get writing.